Georgi Markov was a Bulgarian dissident writer who was assassinated in London in 1978. He had been on edge, having received veiled threats and telling a colleague at the BBC that the Bulgarian authorities were gunning for him. On September 7, 1978, Markov was waiting for a bus on Waterloo Bridge when he felt a sharp pain in his leg. He turned around to see a man picking up an umbrella and walking away. Markov initially thought he had been stung by a wasp, but he soon became ill and was taken to a hospital where he died four days later. An expert involved in the case believed Markov to have been poisoned by Riken, a highly toxic protein produced by castor beans. A puncture mark was found on Markov's thigh, and a tiny metal pellet was discovered in his leg, which was identical to a pellet removed from the back of another Bulgarian exile earlier that week. The pellet was micro-engineered and might have contained ricin. The projectile was laced with the poison ricin, which slowly seeped into Markov's bloodstream from the pinhead-sized pellet implanted in his leg. Markov's assassination was not mentioned on state media, and there was complete silence about it. Nobody ever talked about it, although it was a huge scandal in the UK. The Bulgarian Secret Service was suspected of being behind the assassination, with help from the Soviet KGB. The KGB, according to KGB General Kalugin, designed and manufactured the umbrella that would shoot and inject the tiny microscopic sphere into Markov's thigh. The assassination of Georgi Markov is one of the Cold War's most infamous cases of political assassination. The brazen attack in central London, Markov's public profile, and the alleged use of an exotic spy gadget made the murder a sensational story. The broad events leading to Markov's death are well understood, particularly since defections and the collapse of the Soviet Union allowed a number of former KGB officials to recount their stories. Despite the destruction of many potentially relevant documents, the collapse of communism and opening of previously restricted Bulgarian state archives has allowed unprecedented insight into the case and likely identification of Markov's murderer. Georgi Okolovich's assassination is a captivating and intriguing story that sheds light on the dark arts of espionage and the ruthless tactics employed by the KGB during the Cold War era. Okolovich, the leader of a Russian anti-communist group in exile, lived in Frankfurt, West Germany in 1954. It was during this time that Nikolai Koklov, a KGB agent, appeared at Okolovich's door with a shocking message. Georgi Okolovich, I have come to you from Moscow. The Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union has ordered your assassination. Koklov was entrusted with the task of carrying out the murder, but instead of fulfilling his mission, he made a bold decision that would change the course of his life. He defected to the U.S., betraying the KGB and revealing their sinister plans. The weapon he was supposed to use in the assassination was an electrically operated silence gun disguised as a cigarette pack, which fired cyanide bullets. This creative and covert weapon highlights the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the KGB in their assassination attempts. As a result of his defection and failed assassination of Okolovich, Koklov faced severe consequences. His wife was sentenced to forced resettlement in the Soviet Union as a form of retaliation. However, Koklov himself would also become a target of the KGB. In an attempt to eliminate him, the KGB poisoned Koklov with thallium, a soft metal rat and ant poison. Miraculously, he survived when German doctors were able to clean out his system. Leon Trotsky was a prominent figure in the Russian Revolution and a central leader in the founding of the Soviet Union. He played an important role in the revolution that brought the communist Bolsheviks to power, and he organized the Red Army during the ensuing civil war. Trotsky was not only a leader of the October Revolution of 1917, Commissar of Foreign Affairs in the first Soviet government, founder of the Red Army and Commissar of War from 1918 to 1925, but also Stalin's chief antagonist and critic. Trotsky was exiled from the Soviet Union in 1929 and spent the rest of his life in various countries, including Turkey, France, and Norway. In 1940, Trotsky was living in Coyoacan, Mexico, where he was under constant surveillance by Soviet agents. On August 20, 1940, a Soviet agent named Ramon Mercader 
who had been posing as a Canadian journalist named Frank Jackson, gained access to Trotsky's home by claiming to have a manuscript for him to read. The next day, Mercader attacked Trotsky with an ice axe, striking him in the head. Trotsky's bodyguards apprehended Mercader, but not before he had dealt a fatal blow to Trotsky's skull. Trotsky died the next day on August 21, 1940, at the age of 60. The assassination of Trotsky was a dramatic event that captured the attention of the world. The attack was carried out in a brutal and gruesome manner, and the fact that it was orchestrated by the Soviet Union made it all the more shocking. The assassination was part of Stalin's campaign to eliminate his political enemies, and it was a clear indication of the lengths to which he was willing to go to maintain his grip on power. And there you have it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.